Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Gina and I am the founder of Fully Loving You, the name of this channel. I am a self-love and perfectionism coach, but I also make videos all about mom life and here is one of them. If you've clicked on this, you know exactly what it's about. It is my third trimester recap. And it's so funny because my last pregnancy, I did not even get a chance to film this because I went into labor at 37 weeks. So I'm currently 36 and a half. So I'm trying to jump the gun and record this early. So technically I haven't finished my third trimester, but we, uh, we're getting this done early so that I can give you an update on what these weeks have been like. If this is something you enjoy watching or you would like to see more perfectionism and self-love videos, make sure to subscribe and like this video if you're a mom and or soon to be mom and going through something similar. I'd love to know your thoughts and see if I can be a resource for you. Just a disclaimer, my toddler is currently trying to nap and he is fighting it. So if you hear any noises or anything like that, that is him. Um, we'll see if he goes to bed in the next like 10-ish minutes. I might have to leave and go check on him. <laughs> I feel like this is a theme with videos these days. Uh, but I will be giving birth soon. Like I said, I'm 36 and a half weeks. Uh, my husband is not here. He works on a cruise ship. So I've been doing this kind of solo. Um, I just filmed a day in the life. So if you're interested in what that looks like, um, you can click that video. It's the one right before this. I'll make sure to link it down below as well. Um, but that is what life looks like. So right now, just to summarize, my third trimester it really has been more about the nesting the prep we moved into a new home um, which we love and this is actually my favorite corner right here we just got this chase lounge and it's just it's the perfect little breastfeeding corner so I'm excited about that uh, so it's been all about like setting things up in the house and getting a good flow just in general um, but also adding in baby elements too so making sure she has a great place to sleep I have some nice places to feed um, I have some postpartum recovery mixed throughout the house but yeah so I've just been really focused on nesting and prep um, I will say there's been a lot of anxiety this this uh, trimester, third trimester, because of that, because of moving by myself, my husband's not here, trying to take care of a toddler, and also just the reality is setting in of like a newborn coming into the picture again while also trying to take care of a toddler. It's like, do I remember how to take care of a newborn? It just feels like ages ago. And there's just so many things that I did research on, like wake windows, breastfeeding techniques, um, you know, all those things that I feel like I forgot. <laughs> so going back over those things um, and feeling a little bit of anxiety, like, am I ready? This has gone really fast, uh, way faster than any other uh, trimester. And it just feels like it flew. Um, so just really trying to ground myself and stay calm and stress-free. But There has been a lot of anxiety around multiple elements in this trimester. And I'll chat about that later. I am breaking this video up as usual into different sections. The first section is going to be my physical symptoms. And I have some notes here on my phone. So if I look down, that's why. Um, I felt like I was already big in my second trimester. And I was nervous about like how big I was going to get because <laughs> I was like wow I am already like protruding a lot like how much is she going to be protruding um but it's weird you get kind of used to your size and sometimes I would like look down and be like oh yeah I'm pregnant <laughs> um so it didn't really feel in my body that big but when I would look in the mirror I'd be like whoa <laughs> I'm big but you don't feel it Later on in the trimester I did, but um, yeah, I just, I was really nervous about the size of my belly and going into a second pregnancy, you definitely get bigger than your first, um, which is completely normal. And I talk about it in my first trimester about uh, my, or my first trimester recap about my um, just anxieties around that and um, just some negative thoughts about that. So if you're interested in watching that video, make sure to click 
that or I'll link it in the cards. If, it, if you're going into your second pregnancy, just know that it is completely normal to be bigger and your body to stretch sooner and to just look bigger sooner. And with my growing belly, I have not really seen many stretch marks and my last birth was a c-section and my c-section scars have been just fine. Can't really see them but when I look in the mirror they look okay. Uh, they look moisturized and nothing crazy going on. I don't have any pain there so that was another thing I was worried about. A symptom that I've started to have recently starting at about 34 weeks has been back pain. So because I am bigger now and I'm pretty small, I'm only about five feet tall, um, it's a lot of weight in the front of my body and when you don't have any core your lower back hurts a lot I never really have lower back problems so this is something new so I've really had some pain the last couple weeks especially and it's probably due to my weight and my size and probably all the crap I'm doing around here <laughs> I've also had a kind of weird symptom I feel like I have like carpal tunnel in my left hand I am left-handed so I use this arm and hand predominantly felt like my hands are swollen and um, I had to take off my ring recently, um, but my whole arm is really tight and if I lay on my left side or I bend my arm and use it too long, my fingers and hands start going numb. So I am going to look into this uh, with my chiropractor as well as my OB, but I definitely feel like it's either a pulled muscle or a nerve or something like that and you do have a lot of blood flow and swollenness going on in your limbs so it isn't abnormal to get some sort of carpal tunnel which I was reading about my mom got it when she was pregnant with me um, so it is something that's not crazy but I do want to look into it because it's only on one side um, and it's causing me a lot of discomfort so I will be looking into that in the next couple days just to make sure everything is good but that has been a real pain in my patooey uh, trying to sleep I can only sleep on one side and uh, I, it just gets tingly and numb every time I try to use it so just quite painful and like I said I am a little bit swollen I didn't really see any swollenness until 35 weeks which is only like a week and a half ago um, and only in my like hands and my feet not really too much in my legs yeah I haven't I haven't really seen anything before that. When I went to my 32 week appointment with my OB, she reminded me that the Braxton Hicks symptoms will be fast approaching in this trimester and I had felt really great up until that point, um, 32 weeks, and I feel like she like jinxed me or something and like brought on that symptom. Uh, so I definitely started feeling the Braxton Hicks that week, like that week, 32 weeks. And I started feeling some round ligament pain as well. So all that stretching going on on the side, I was feeling a lot of pain there, more cramping um, in my stomach and in my uterus. So just uh, just starting to feel all the cramps. I'm probably um, starting to dilate now, which is due to all that pain um, and the growing and stretching of your belly. So I was feeling pretty good up until 32 weeks and then after that um, it just kind of comes and goes regularly it's not too awful nothing debilitating I would say but I definitely started feeling those symptoms at that time and also they say they get worse in your second pregnancy as well as the contractions when you're breastfeeding um, after you've had the baby they're also worse so I'm making sure to plan ahead for that and getting something um, like a tonic for those symptoms that I got my last birth as well. In my first trimester, I had a little bit of nausea, nothing crazy. I didn't really throw up. I just kind of dry heaved a lot. And again, you can watch that video if you're interested in those symptoms. Um, everyone is different. Everyone experiences a different pregnancy and different symptoms. So make sure to take that with a grain of salt. But I heard that sometimes with girls, you get more symptoms more intense symptoms. So I was preparing myself for some nausea in this trimester. It's got a crap ton of sparkling waters <laughs> and crackers and things. Um, but actually I haven't experienced any nausea, nothing. Even when I'm like dumping my son's potty, which is so gross, um, I still don't feel any nausea. And I'm constantly eating, which is probably the reason why I'm not feeling as much nausea because I'm probably eating too much um, around the holidays or just eating too frequently but 
it probably means we're just at home more and those snacks are readily available. So um, yeah, no nausea. The only thing I experienced was as soon as I hit my third trimester, I actually got a stomach virus. So I thought that it was my nausea kicking in, but it actually was a tummy bug and I couldn't keep anything down for like three days. It was terrible um, in contact with my OB and uh, I was gonna go in but then it ended up subsiding but it was a pretty scary time because like you're not feeding your baby any food and you can't keep anything down it was quite um, nerve-wracking for me the tummy virus actually had me lose a couple of pounds before my next appointment um, which I talked about in my second trimester not the goal obviously but uh, I definitely did not see as much of an increase in my weight because of that which lasted I think the tummy virus lasted like less than a week but um, yeah if it would have lasted longer than that I would have probably had to go in and, and do something about it but yeah that was my only like real scary moment um, actually, no, it wasn't. I had something later on too. <laughs> so the joys of third trimester is you have insomnia. So I have been waking up every two hours mainly to pee, but as soon as you're up and you've peed and you go back into bed, you can't get comfortable and then you are awake and your mind is racing and then you get hungry and then you get a snack and then you have to pee again. So it's just, it's it's a vicious cycle and I'm barely sleeping these days um, especially the last couple of days because of this pain in my arm and um, pain in my back it's it's getting a lot more uncomfortable to uh, be pregnant so because of that I am super tired as well as trying to take care of my toddler and set up things around here by myself I'm doing a lot of prep work like freezer meals um, setting up things and so I am a tired Tired lady, um, just in general. So um, look at my notes. We're not doing as many outings as we were before in my second trimester. Obviously not traveling like we did in my second trimester a lot. Um, I try to alternate my days and have intentional days. So today is a, a stay at home day and um, tomorrow is an outing day. So we're gonna run a few errands. We're gonna have a few like of an OB appointment. Yesterday we ran a few errands and I'm definitely taking advantage of drive ups and delivery services and pickup orders um, instead of having to go in because I am just pooped. Um, and that is the beauty of those services, right? They really provide um, a lot of convenience for people. So I'm trying to just like slow down and take advantage of those and really just rest. I've had a few food cravings, um, so mostly comfort foods. It is winter and we just had Christmas and Thanksgiving and all the things. Um, so that really got me in the mood for comfort food. But nothing has really changed um, from my regular personality as well as the other trimesters. I'm still loving like creamy things, uh, like cheeses, dairy, bread, um, a lot of bread, bagels, crackers, warm things like soups, bread. <laughs> um, and lately I've been having cereal at night, which feels really nice. Um, I've kind of gotten addicted to my son's like all natural like cocoa bunnies, like chocolate bunnies or whatever from Annie's. Anyway, those are super delicious. Um, eggs have always been a comfort food for me. And then Christmas cookies, obviously. But trying to really like limit that now because I'm kind of over all the sugar. I really, really need to stop with the sugar. But really loving the soups and the warm stuff. Oof. Still love like the cottage cheese on toast at night and the cereal. Those are my late night snacks. But yeah, those are my comfort foods. Nothing too weird. Um, like you hear all these weird cravings and they're not cravings that I like I have to have this right now like I've never been like that with both of my pregnancies um I kind of just like eat what's there and I take advantage of leftovers and I just make sure to have a lot of like bread and creamy things in the house <laughs> since about 20 weeks she has been continually kicking me she is a kicker I'm not feeling it as much as I did in my second trimester. It's probably because I was moving a lot more and there's probably like not a lot of space left in there, <laughs> but she is a kicker. I feel her constantly, which is great. I feel like I felt, I feel her a lot more than I did my last pregnancy with my son. Um, so we'll see what this little lady's like when she comes out. I feel like she's going to be a wild one. We'll see. 
Um, a couple of TMI things, not as much vaginal discharge this time. Um, I haven't really had a ton of like issues with it. I think it amps up a little bit more in these next couple of weeks. It hasn't really been something I've noticed abnormally. The other thing is since I would say the start of my second trimester, I didn't really mention this last video, but I have dry colostrum on my nipples. So that has kind of been there from second trimester, which is kind of crazy. I haven't had any, any leakage or anything weird like that, but it kind of just like sits there. It's like ready to go. Um, your body just gets used to it and it's, it's just waiting for baby. So that is a symptom I've experienced. And the last physical symptom is I am warm all the time, sweating all the time. Uh, and it's funny cause it's, really cold here it's um like 20 degrees today and snowing um in minnesota and this is our first winter and i was like oh my god i'm gonna be so cold like i need uh, it's gonna take me a while to get used to this and da 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 but it's actually been kind of nice because <laughs> i'm so hot um to be able to not have to layer up as much because it's i'm just naturally really hot right now um, so that'll probably change into postpartum, maybe not while I'm breastfeeding, but, um, yeah, that's been like a pleasantly surprising symptom. The next section I want to talk about is my emotional symptoms. I talked a little bit in the beginning about some anxiety that I was feeling, um, but I wasn't feeling like overly emotional. I know a lot of people are like, you have so many hormones in your last, you know, trimester and you get angry and you get snippy or you get really upset and cry a lot. I don't think I've really had those symptoms very much. The only time I cried was when I watched a uh, birth story or birth um, vlog on YouTube. <laughs> I think it's because I was just getting mentally ready for inviting a new baby into our family. So it just kind of hit me a little bit harder than I had expected. Um, but other than that, I haven't felt like overly emotional or hormonal, um, which is, I guess, great. I'm getting more and more excited and attached every week, um, knowing that she is coming and she's gonna be in some of these outfits that I have in the closet for her and wearing like little bows and um, just like really envisioning what she looks like. Um, hopefully she looks like me because my son looked just like my husband. Uh, that would be really nice. But yeah, just getting more excited and attached. I think when you're uh, in the first stages of your second pregnancy or even your third and fourth, you don't feel as attached. It's it's a weird feeling. Um, you don't really have time to feel attached. You feel very distracted. Um, so like I said in my last video, my second trimester recap, I've really tried to slow down and take progress uh, photos and write in my Growing You book, which has really helped me feel more uh, emotionally connected to her. Um, but we're really, really excited starting to like say her name to my son, um, which we're revealing when she's born. And um, yeah, just, just really excited now. And in that, my anxiety has come from just like making sure that I'm prepared. I'm very hyper focused on that right now and nothing else matters. I think it's my like mama nesting instinct. I've really just put the pedal to the metal and just made sure that each space in my home is super prepared for a newborn and um, the way that I want it set up for comfort, if anything, making sure she has enough you know, of the things she needs, just really, really anxious and stressed and, um, like I said, focused on that. That is my number one priority right now. And in that, I've noticed a lot of impatience with me. Um, I want things right now, which is why we signed up for an Amazon Prime again, because I love the convenience of being like, oh gosh, I need to get this. Um, and it'll be here in like a day or two days. Um, so this, the impatience with trying to get everything set up is, is still there. It's starting to slow down, but when we first moved in, it was very high and very just, yeah, we had been here for a week and people were like, wow, 
there's like a lot of things set up here like it looks already really cozy it's because i just wanted it done <laughs> a little bit of nervousness and sadness around the birth i'm not quite sure if my husband will be here for her birth which makes me a little bit upset um, i'm trying to just let go of those feelings and make sure that i am super prepared and feeling calm and comfortable and confident with my um with my birth and my birth team and i'm getting my husband to write like affirmations or some um, doing some audios for me so that he can still feel connected and involved from afar he is going to arrive two days before the due date so she may come early she may come late um, but I'm preparing myself for him not being here just so I don't set myself up for failure or disappointment um, so yeah just feeling a lot of nervousness about about that because my first birth was 56 hours long and I'll make sure to link that and put it in the cards um, but it was quite traumatic for me. I had a lot of learnings, a lot of releasing of emotions through it. So I'm really hoping that this time around it is different. It goes more towards my plan. And if it doesn't, there will be more learnings all around. Um, but yeah, just getting getting a lot of mixed feelings around around the birth and um, trying to stay calm and, and warm and connected and focused on on like the other side of like the bonding experiences that we'll have together and some actions i've taken with the anxiety is i've brought down literally all of my baby books and all of my pregnancy books and i'm like skimming them i did that the other day because i was like oh my god i should like do some more research or something <laughs> make sure there's nothing i've missed uh, because you know we're, we're getting into it so around this time when i was pregnant with my son i went into labor so uh, sorry, a week from today, I went into labor. So I'm really just like getting myself mentally wrapped around that like I could go into labor at any time. So just just making sure I'm tying up all my loose ends, all my bags are packed, which feels really great. Um, just trying to ease my anxiety as much as possible. And by doing that, it means feeling super prepared and uh, planning ahead. Um, my to-do list is going down, which feels great. But um, using these extra moments of time to rest, to do some labor prep for my body, which I'll talk about in a second, and then also like freezer meals and things like that. The next category is movement. So haven't really worked out probably this entire this entire pregnancy. I would say second trimester I was feeling pretty good. I would do a couple of like bar videos or yoga videos but other than that because I was alone with my toddler most of the time I was constantly climbing upstairs. I was moving things. We were doing things outside. Um, I was exhausted. I was so tired and I felt like I was using my whole body already um, so I felt like I really didn't need to do much and then put in the element of like moving <laughs> And setting up a home by yourself um, that wore me out and I felt like I had no energy or time to work out so the things that I've been doing have been mostly stretching stretching and obviously always staying active with my son getting up I'm doing laundry I'm doing dishes I'm cooking I'm picking up toys with him I'm playing you know those types of things so that has really been my movement throughout this trimester especially my pregnancy we haven't been getting outside too much because it's been quite cold and icy and snowy um, the one time that we did go out so I did have an incident where I fell in a parking lot and that was quite traumatic for me um, I hadn't fallen at all in my last pregnancy and I didn't really know how to handle it. So I called our nurse line at the OB's office and she just said the protocol is if you're this late in your pregnancy is to go to the hospital and get monitored. So I had a car full of groceries, I had my toddler who still needed lunch, and of course I was like, great. <laughs> so had to drop everything and um, drop him off at our best friend's house and head to the hospital and get monitored for about four hours. She was totally fine. I only fell on my hip and my back, which maybe triggered a little bit of movement or a little bit of pain that I'm experiencing now. Um, but yeah, it was a scary time. I cried a lot because I just, I didn't know what to do and I didn't know how 
she was affected and it was just scary. It was just a scary moment. Um, but I'm glad that it's over and I'm glad that she is good and she was monitored and this pregnancy is going so well with growth, with all my numbers, with all my blood pressures and, and everything. I'm just, I'm very, very grateful. Um, no gestational diabetes, like no preeclampsia, no, I didn't have any fertility issues. So this was like my moment to get, <laughs> to get upset and I did. So yeah, she's good, I'm good. Um, but yeah, it was a scary, it was a scary moment. The next category is resources and I really won't go into much detail in this category just because in my first and second recap videos, second trimester re recap videos, I talked a lot about um, different resources that I have been enjoying. I'm still enjoying those resources as well as a few others. When I had my anxiety about <laughs> taking care of a newborn again, I brought down all my newborn books and I will make sure to link those below so that you know but I have like a newborn handbook I have the Montessori baby book I have a, a sibling book so like welcoming a new baby while you already have a child um, the mama natural is a go-to that I've been referencing uh, regularly especially about like the birth plan um, options that you have which we will start to narrow down by the end of the week and print and put in my uh, my bag. So that is really helpful to have on hand as well. I did take a hypnobirthing class my last pregnancy. So I have the hypnobirthing book as well as the rainbow relaxation meditation. So I've been really taking advantage of downloading like Spotify, nature, meditation tracks um, for my birth, as well as just scouring the internet, whether it is Pinterest or YouTube for any hospital bag videos just to see if there's anything that I could benefit from that's different from what I already have packed or get some ideas, get some juices flowing, um, just to see if there's anything that I could add as well as like the first 24 hours with a newborn, just like getting back into what that looks like, a lot of resting, um, just to see other people's experience, especially positive birth stories. I have been really, really looking at positive birth stories. I'll link a couple of new people, uh, sorry, one new person, her name is Bridget Taylor down below. She is a doula and uh, birth educator and she has some really awesome resources as well as a course. I've not taken her course but a lot of her free resources are awesome. So I will make sure to link her YouTube video down below. That's really the only new thing I have added to my resources and research. Moving right along to self-care slash labor prep. So I'll quickly go through my supplements list. Nothing has changed since the last video. So I'm taking a prenatal, I'm taking a probiotic, a DHA, magnesium, vitamin D. And again, I will link those brands below. On top of all the comfort foods that I've been having, I have been trying to add in nutritionally dense whole foods, even if they are not as many like like salads or things like that have been adding things like hemp chia seeds lots of um, good fats like avocados um, i've been adding a lot of like salmon and seafood too as well as like whole grains um, chickpea pastas a lot of protein rich things so i'm really trying even with the cravings and even with the holidays to add in some really good recipes like adding in some stews some um some like spinach and kale into a lot of our recipes uh veggie rich pastas or things like that so i'm really trying and my prenatal is filled with a lot of organic uh produce powders too and i made sure to get that one it's my favorite so starting at about 34 weeks, I made sure to make red raspberry leaf tea a part of my regular routine. So I haven't been drinking as much as I want to, mostly because I'm exhausted and need a coffee um, more than anything. And I've been chugging water. So to add tea on top of that, I'm kind of like, Wah. so I do have a cup a, a night which feels really good for me right now. I'm also adding in the six dates a day. I started doing that this week. Um, so last pregnancy, I don't know why I got the huge dates. I was like, this is, this is a lot of dates. <laughs> six of these are you kidding me um but i got the big bag from costco and the dates are like a lot smaller so 
that is much more realistic for me to have six of those a day. <laughs> I also blew up my birth ball. So I've been doing some exercises on the birth ball and I've been watching some YouTube videos on te techniques around that, um, as well as just getting into birth positions uh, more often, whether it's like leaning over or getting on all fours or inverting my knees, um, things like that. Just I want to feel comfortable in those positions and not feel like I'm getting into these for the first time when I'm in labor. Um, so I'm watching a lot of videos of t those techniques as well as breathing techniques getting back into that like meditation visualization from my hypnobirthing class just really getting back into preparing my body preparing my mind for uh, the biggest the biggest intense moment of your pregnancy and it's exhausting so I want to make sure I have the energy and feel prepared for it as well as just educating myself on the birth process again whether it's like which phases are what how long they are what's happening in my body whether it's how long the contractions last and the most intense moments um, transition and as well as the pushing and um, practicing the, the pushing action with my breath so that has been also really helpful as well as delivering the placenta because I obviously had a very long birth it did not go um, in the direction that I wanted it to and it all of those phases kind of were a little bit muddled so it's it was nice to like re look at the information and just fix you know see what that process is supposed to look like um, up until delivering the placenta so that's really helped as well when it comes to self-care and taking care of like my body and my wardrobe and my clothes i love clothes but i really have not given a crap this trimester about my clothes i do laundry twice a week i wear the same things athleisure leggings cozy pants sweatpants i just i bought a pair of maternity jeans and have not worn them once um, i constantly want to feel comfortable while i'm chasing my toddler we're not going anywhere we're not doing anything fun I'm not even wearing any of like my dresses and stuff. I feel like my last pregnancy because I was working at Lululemon and working full time and <laughs> just wanted to look cute. I was constantly just exploring my body. I was a little bit smaller, so everything was quite stretchy. But now I don't really fit into much, so I've had to borrow my friend's maternity wear and um, that's been helping me get through it. But uh, yeah, I just have bought nothing for this maternity wear pregnancy because I just, I know it's not going to last very long and I've been really stocking up on cozy things for home, like really cozy pants, really nice sweaters and cardigans and blankets and pajamas and things like that. That's really where I'm putting my focus. Not as much like things for outings or things for like dressing up. Don't care. <laughs> And the last thing for self-care that I wanted to mention is we celebrated my maternity and having a new baby with a maternity shoot slash family photo shoot. Before my husband left, we did uh, like a fall themed one outside. It was freezing that day, um, the day before Halloween, but it was, it was so hilarious um, but I'm glad we did it because we got some really great family photos and I wanted to just capture that and really um, just savor those moments of just us three because it's about to be four and just honor my pregnancy in that way I got some good maternity shots as well so that was really important to me to get before my husband left so one more category before we go into the bump update i did want to mention just a few things about my birth plan update we definitely have a doula we have two of them that rotate so i mentioned this in the last video if one of them gets um, tired and needs to be tapped out after about 12 hours they switch out so you always have somebody feeling fresh feeling great and supported uh, supportive for you so so that was awesome and love them, love them so far. I've been a great resource. Um, the other resource that I have added to my birth plan is my placenta encapsulation. So I didn't get to do this last time because my placenta was just destroyed <laughs> and couldn't be saved. So hopefully this time I can definitely save it and uh, put it in a capsule form and take it. It is incredible for your hormones and healing um, within your postpartum period. So I'm really, really hoping that that happens. So I have a cooler that I'm going to take to the hospital and put it on ice as soon as I deliver it. And it has to be out of the hospital, I think, like within two to four hours. 
um, so she will come pick it up at the hospital. Nothing really has changed other than that. I will be perfecting my birth plan in the next couple of days with my doula. I have an appointment with her tomorrow and I just want that printed and ready to go. I'm going to do a little bit more research about vaccines and things that happen after baby is born and some options that I would like to consider that were more um, honoring my last birth plan, which is a lot more natural. We tried to birth my son at a birthing center, so everything was very natural. Um, so I'm still trying to honor that as much as possible. Um, so we're going to make sure to perfect that and print that out and have it ready to go. And that is it for my third trimester recap. I can't believe I got through it before giving birth. What an accomplishment. <laughs> but I did want to share my bump. I'm wearing a nice tight turtleneck today. It is really cold. It's like 20 degrees outside. So I'll show you what that looks like today. So here she is. 36 and a half weeks. She is big. She is beautiful. And she is ready to go. Let's see if I can back up a little bit. Well, that is all I have for you today. Um, I'm hoping to pump out maybe one more video or a short or something before I give birth. We'll see how that goes. Um, hopefully she can simmer a little bit longer um but yeah if you like this video make sure to like and subscribe i also love making perfectionism and self-love videos but mommy life is definitely predominant in my life right now which is why i'm creating these videos to just pump them out while they're still relevant and then move on to something else when it's not so I hope you like this and make sure to join me for a day, my day in the lives and week in the lives, what I eat. I'm also a health coach, so I love making videos like that as well. So join me next time and I will see you in the next one. Bye.